<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, yeah. the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yeah. Yeah. present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, hunt you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. It's like taking a magic carpet to the Yukon. Right before your eyes, models of the Klondike Mountain, Hemati Headquarters Building in Dawson, Sergeant Preston's Cabin, White Horse Jail, Dog Sleds and Husky. Yes, 59 exciting cutout models are yours to build Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail. In a few minutes, hear details of this thrilling offer made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Shot from guns. Bat Nelson was one of the most dangerous outlaws ever known in the Yukon Territory. After breaking out of jail in Whitehorse, he had fled north along the Yukon Trail. And in spite of a dogged and relentless pursuit by Sergeant Preston, he had so far managed to avoid capture. Now the sergeant was seated in the office of Inspector Conrad at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City, reporting on the situation. The inspector was saying, Sergeant... I've never before known any criminal to slip through your fingers the way Bat Nelson has done. I have no excuses to offer, sir. Well, you don't need any. Catching Bat Nelson is a mighty tough assignment. I realize that. And if anyone can bring him in, you're the man to do it. Just the same, we've got to get results, Sergeant, and soon. Well, there's pictures posted all over town, sir, and the city patrol is combing every dive and hangout in Dawson. Beyond that, I'm checking half a dozen different leads from underworld informers. You're sure he's in Dawson? There's no doubt about that, sir. The problem is to find his hideout. Come in. Uh, Inspector. Uh, yes, what is it, Constable? There's a man outside who wants to see you, sir. He won't talk to anyone but you. Who is he? His name is Joe Baird. Joe Baird? Sergeant, isn't that the fellow who was involved in that shooting on El Dorado Creek last spring? That's right, sir. Baird was suspected of shooting a man from ambush, but we had to let him go for lack of evidence. Mm, I wonder what he wants. We might be coming in with a tip on Bat Nelson. His reward money is attracting a lot of attention. In that case, we'd better see him. Send him in, Constable. Very well, sir. All right, Baird, go on in. So, you're here too, eh, Preston? Any objection? No. In fact, it suits me fine. What's on your mind, Baird? Last spring, you Mounties accused me of shooting a sourdough named McKenzie. What about it? You had to let me go because I was innocent. Well, now I'm here to tell you who really shot McKenzie. Go ahead and tell us. He's sitting right beside you, Inspector. What's that? You heard me. The guy who killed McKenzie is none other than the famous Sergeant Preston. Are you out of your head? Not by a long shot. What's your game, Baird? The game is that I'm accusing you of murder. And what's more, I aim to back up my accusation. You'd better start doing just that. What's your evidence against me? I'll submit all the evidence as needed inside of 24 hours. In the meantime, I've said all I'm going to say. To you, that is. As far as the newspapers are concerned, I'm giving out the story right now. Bad if this is some practical joke. It's no joke, as you'll soon find out. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm staying at Bell Manor's Hotel. The news of Joe Baird's charge against Sergeant Preston created a sensation throughout the town of Dawson. Soon after, the Klondike Nugget put out a special edition carrying the story. And soon after that, a lawyer named Clark McToon returned to his office with a copy of the newspaper in one hand. In a 
small back room, two men were playing cards. One was a gunman named Red Hobart. The other was the escaped outlaw, Bat Nelson. As the lawyer entered, Nelson spoke. Uh, what's up, Lieutenant? Plenty. The town's been in an uproar ever since the nugget came out with the Joe Baird story. Here, take a look for yourself. Holy smoke. From the size of these headlines, you think Dawson was burning down, Well, eh? hell, no wonder. <laughs> Preston's the most famous Mountie on the force. It's the biggest news since the Bonanza strike. Sergeant Preston accused of murder. Former suspect claims Mountie killed McKenzie. A shocking and almost incredible charge. As Bat Nelson read the news story, his eyes gleamed with satisfied hatred. When he was through, he broke into an appreciative <laughs> chuckle. Red Hobart reached out and took the paper from him. Here, Bat, let me take a gander. Uh, sure, go ahead and read it. By Thunder Batoon, that was a mighty smart idea, having Baird spring that story. Ah, that's just the first move. By the time we're through with Preston, there'll be a scandal big enough to wreck the whole Northwest Mounted Police setup. That's good. The sooner you get the heat off me, the better I'll like it. And the safer you'll be, too. Don't forget that. If the money should ever nab me, I'll see to it that you hang right alongside me. Listen, 24 hours from now, there'll be such a hullabaloo in this town that no one will even remember the Mounties are looking for a guy named Bat Nelson. Uh, he's right, Bat. This scheme will really set Dawson on its ear. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing Joe Baird don't know what you got in mind. Ah, Baird's just a thick-skilled gunhawk. I'm just using him as a pawn. I told him I'd figured out a smart way to pin the McKenzie murder on Preston. He thinks the whole deal is nothing but a blackmail scheme. Baird really killed McKenzie himself, didn't he? Sure he did. But the Mounties couldn't prove it. When are you going to make the next move? Tonight. I'm having Baird send a message to Mountie headquarters. That night, Sergeant Preston came to the hotel. He entered the lobby and went up to the desk where he was greeted by Bell Manners, the bluff, big-hearted owner of the hotel. Well, hello there, Sergeant. And you too, King, you old rascal. Hello, Bill. Hey, uh, Sergeant, what in tarnation is this malarkey Baird spreading about you killing a sourdough? You know as much about it as I do, Bill. Just sent me a message saying that if I didn't want the charge pressed to come over and talk to him. Why, that miserable polecat. If he thinks anyone will believe his story, he's crazy. What's his room number? Oh, uh, 214. Thanks, Bill. Come along, King. <laughs> A few moments later, the sergeant knocked on Baird's door. Well, 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 if it isn't Sergeant Preston. Come on in. All right, Baird, I'm here. Start talking. Preston, I got you right where I want you. You're on a mighty hot spot right now. Skip all that and come to the point. I'm curious to know what's back of this accusation you're making. Okay, Sergeant, I'll give it to you short and sweet. We both know you didn't kill McKenzie. Mm. But I got a way of pinning the murder on you and making the charge stick. I told the newspapers I'm going to spring the evidence against you tomorrow. But just between the two of us, I'm uh, willing to forget the whole business. Providing you meet my terms. Meet your terms. That's right. It's going to cost you 10,000 bucks to keep me from spilling what I know to a grand jury. Why, you dirty rat? Now steady down, Preston. Rough stuff won't help you. You'll be singing a different tune when I spring the evidence I got against you. We'll see about that. In the meantime, let me remind you, blackmail is a serious crime. You can't prove a thing without witnesses. Just the same, you'd better watch your step. Come on, King. As Sergeant Preston strode off down the hall, he didn't know that someone was listening behind a closed door. As soon as his steps faded out down the stairway, the lawyer, Clark Mattoon, emerged from his own room and hurried down the hall to 214. Oh, oh, it's you, Mattoon. Yes, how'd it go? Yeah, not so good. You sure we're going to be able to fake enough evidence to hang this rap on Preston? Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you, Baird. Get your hands up. Hey, put that gun away. Calm down, Baird. I'm not going to shoot you. Then what's the idea of pulling a gun? I'll explain that in just a moment. First, turn around and face the wall. A few minutes later, Clark Mattoon descended into the hotel lobby wearing his hat and coat. As he passed by the desk, he spoke to Bell Manners. What was all the trouble about up on the second floor? Trouble? What do you mean? Well, it, it stopped now, but about five minutes ago, it sounded like a fight was going on in that room at the end of the hall. Uh, 
214, I think it is. Oh, 214. Uh-huh. That's Joe Baird's room. Sergeant Preston was just in to see him about the story he gave out to the papers. Say, you know, he's accusing Preston of murder. Yes, I read that story. Hot air, that's all it is. <laughs> you know, I reckon Sergeant must have lost his temper and given Baird a slight going over. Serves Baird right, too. The lion sidewinder. You know, I've got a good mind to throw him out. But Belle Manners was in for a most unpleasant shock. The following morning, she rushed excitedly into Sergeant Preston's office at Mounted Police Headquarters. Sergeant, Sergeant, you gotta come quick. What's wrong, Bill? It's that fellow Joe Baird. I just found him in his room, stabbed to death. A short time later, Sergeant Preston was looking over the scene of the crime while a police surgeon examined the dead man's body. There were signs that a violent struggle had taken place, and the room was filled with a reek of hair tonic from a bottle that had apparently been knocked over during the fight. How long has he been dead, Doctor? Over uh, 12 hours, I should say. Huh? In that case, he must have been killed soon after I left here. You know, it seems odd that he was stabbed in the back. Well, what's odd about it? If he fought with the murderer, you'd expect him to be stabbed in front or on one side. Uh, that's true. Still, the murderer might have gotten one arm around him and stabbed him in the back while they were wrestling with each other. Let's find out if anyone heard a fight in here last night. Bell Manners was standing outside the door, holding in check an excited crowd of hotel guests and other spectators. Hey, Sergeant, who killed him? Yeah, tell us what happened. Now, shut up, shut up, all of you, so we can hear what the sergeant's got to say. Bell, did any of the guests report hearing a fight in here last night? What? Why, yes, Sergeant. Huh? Lawyer Mattoon heard the fight you had with Baird. The fight I had? Yeah. That's right, I did. What are you talking about? Why, shucks, you're not going to deny it, are you, Sergeant? I heard a real slam-bang scrap going on in Baird's room. And Bell Manners here told me you were visiting Baird at the time. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Everybody's talking about them. And no wonder. There's never been anything like the new cutout models to build Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail. They're offered only by delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The famous cereal shot from gun. These are models of the Yukon buildings and things you're hearing about in the stories on this program. You can follow Sergeant Preston and King in their relentless pursuit of the cunning, dangerous Bat Nelson from Whitehorse to Dawson City. You get a model of Bell Manor's Hotel that you've just been hearing about in today's story. You get the Mountie headquarters in Dawson where Sergeant Preston met with Inspector Conrad today. It's true. There's never been any models just like these. There's a river boat with a stern wheel that actually turns. The dog sleds and dog teams can be hitched up and moved around. There's even scenery and interiors. The interior of Bell Manor's Hotel, of a supply cache that's built on stilts. What's more, these Yukon Trail models are bigger, easier to put together. And they don't cost a single extra penny. They come on eight special new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The king-size cereal shot from gun. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. And full of tender crispness and delicious nut-like flavor. So hurry and get delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Yes, today or tomorrow, you can start to build your Yukon Trail. Every package is clearly numbered on the front. There are eight different packages in all. And the Monty Headquarters and Bell Manor's Hotel are on package number seven. Don't wait. Get your number seven package of swell-tasting, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice immediately. There's nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. Your grocer now has these Yukon Trail cutout models that come only on Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Be sure you also get packages number one through six so you can build the complete Yukon Trail from Whitehorse to Dawson City. Now to continue. The excitement caused by Joe Baird's accusation against Sergeant Preston was nothing compared to the uproar that followed the news of Baird's murder. 
in spite of the fact that Sergeant Preston was one of the most respected and best-liked men in the Yukon Territory, the circumstances surrounding Baird's murder were so incriminating that many of the townsfolk of Dawson were convinced of the sergeant's guilt. Well, I don't like to say it, but it sure looks to me like Preston killed that fella, Baird. Yeah, it does for a fact. Now, wait a minute. You listen to me, you scandal-mongering bunch of old women. Sergeant Preston's no more of a murderer than I am. Figure it out for yourself, Bill. The police sergeant says Baird was killed around 8 or 9 o'clock last night, which is just when Preston came to visit him. Oh. What's more, Clark Mattoon heard him having a big set And don't forget, Preston had a mighty good motive for killing him. You bet he did. Baird claimed he was going to produce evidence proving that Preston murdered that sourdough out on El Dorado Creek last spring. Yeah. So Preston killed him to keep him from spilling the beans. Right. Right. Well, I still say you're a pack of numbskulls if you think Preston's guilty. No matter what you say, Bell. Things look mighty black against Sergeant Preston. And if the Mounties don't put him on trial, folks will lose respect for the Northwest Mounted Police all over the territory. Right. Meanwhile, Inspector Conrad was discussing the situation with Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, I take it there's no chance of King picking up a scent at the scene of the murder. Not a chance, sir. The odor of hair tonic from that broken bottle is too strong. Do you think the bottle was broken just for that reason? I'm sure of it, sir. In fact, I'd say that all the signs indicating a struggle were fate. What do you think happened? In my opinion, Inspector Baird offered no resistance. He was simply stabbed in the back and slumped face downward on the floor. Afterward, the murderer fixed the room to make it look as though there'd been a fight. Well, in that case, Baird must have been taken by surprise. Either that or the murderer pulled a gun and forced him to turn around. If there was no fight, then Clark Mattoon is definitely lying. I knew that to begin with. Well, you can't be sure of that, Sergeant. Someone might have slipped into Baird's room and had a fight with him immediately after you left. It's possible, sir, but not probable. Why should Mattoon want to frame you for murder? I don't know. But if he's back at this frame-up, he's made a mighty thorough job of it. Clark Mattoon is a clever shyster. He'll give us plenty of trouble if we try to pin anything on him. Inspector, I have a plan that may help us get the goods on Mattoon if he really is guilty. Let's hear it, Sergeant. Assuming Mattoon is back at this frame up, he must have hired Baird to make that original accusation against me. Now, suppose someone were to go to Mattoon and... Inspector Conrad listened closely to the sergeant's plan. When the sergeant was through speaking, he expressed his enthusiastic approval. By thunder, it's worth trying, Sergeant. But whom can we get to impersonate Baird's brother? Any member of the force would probably be recognized. Well, what about Lester Shelburn, sir? You mean that private detective from the States? That's right. Well, the assignment might be dangerous. Detective work usually is, sir. Oh, very well. I hope Shelburne will take on the job. When Sergeant Preston broached the idea to Shelburne, the private detective agreed to take on the assignment. A short time later, the two men walked down the main street of Dawson and halted within sight of Clark Mattoon's office. Now, remember, Shelburne, the idea is to force Mattoon's hand. If he really did kill Joe Baird, he may try to kill you, so don't hesitate to call for help if you need it. I doubt if that'll be necessary, Sergeant. I've got a gun, and I know how to use it. King and I will wait here for an hour. If you're not out of Mattoon's office by that time, we'll come after you. Right. Leaving the Mountie, Shelburne continued down the street alone and walked into Clark Mattoon's office. Mattoon and Red Hobart were seated inside the office. The lawyer greeted his visitor. Good afternoon. You Clark Mattoon? That's right. I don't believe I know you. My name's Baird. Jake Baird. I'm Joe's brother. Joe Baird's brother? You mean, uh, Joe Baird, the fellow who was just murdered? That's who I mean. But, uh, I, I, I didn't know Joe Baird had any relatives here in the Yukon. Well, you know now. I just came up from Frisco a while back. Well, um, what can I do for you? You can tell me who killed Joe and why. Why, that's quite obvious. Sergeant Preston did. He killed him because Joe had evidence which would have convicted him of the Mackenzie killing. Don't give me that. I talked to Joe just the other day before yesterday. He told me you'd hired him to pull some kind of a shakedown on Preston. The whole deal was phony. Preston never killed Mackenzie at all. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, you do. What's more, I've got a hunch you were playing Joe for a sucker right from the start. You were planning all along to kill him so as to frame Preston on a real murder rap. You're free to think anything you please. Personally, I think you're crazy. I'll lay it right on the line, Mattoon. Either you come clean with me and cut me in on whatever game you're playing, or else I'm going to the Mounties and tell them what I know. Go ahead if you want to make a fool of yourself. That's your final answer? That's my final answer. All right. You ask for it. 
As Shelburne turned away and headed for the door, the lawyer signaled to Red Hobart. Get your hands up, mister. So you don't think I'm crazy anymore, huh? You are crazy enough to turn your back, that's all. What'll I do with him, Mr. March him into the bag room. We'll let Bat and Nelson decide what to do with him. Right. Come on, you. A moment later, in the back room, Shelburne stood with his hands in the air while Bat Nelson took his gun and searched his pockets. When Bat found the detective's wallet, he opened it and saw the identification hey, card inside. Wait a minute. This guy ain't Joe Baird's brother. Who is he? By cutting you this card, he's Lester Shelburne, operator of 268, August what? Detective Agency, San Francisco. Holy smoke, he's what? a private detective. That too, you dumb ninny. He was just bluffing you and you fell for it. How did I know he wasn't on the level? After all, I'm the one who killed Baird. I'm the one who will swing for it if the police find out the truth. I couldn't afford to take a chance. Who sent you here, Shelburne? Wouldn't you like to know? I'll make him talk, Bat. Go ahead and try. Never mind. He must be working for the Mounties. The Mounties? Sure. Who else would have reason to hire him? If the Mounties hired him, they'll know he came here. Yeah, and that means I'm getting out of here while they're getting as good. Hey, now listen. You can't walk out and leave us holding the bag. I can't stay here and be caught either. What do you wind up about anyway? The Mounties can't make a case against you unless he found Shelburne's body here on the premises. What do you mean? It'll soon be dark. Then you can take him down and dump him in the river. Uh, he's right, Matuna. It's a good idea. Sure, I'm right. In the meantime, you can tie him up and gag him. While you two are doing that, I'm going to clear out the back way. A short winter day had drawn to a close, and darkness was falling by the time Sergeant Preston's hour of waiting was up. Before entering the lawyer's office, he issued instructions to King. Go around to the back, King, and stand guard. Round to the back. That's it, fella. Don't let anyone leave by the back door. Clark Mattoon was alone in the front office. Well, hello there, Sergeant. What can I do for you? You can tell me what happened to Jake Baird. Jake Baird? Well, I never heard of him. Who is he? Never mind the lies, Mattoon. I've been watching your office for the last hour. Jake Baird came in here and never came out again. I assure you, Sergeant, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, Mattoon, if that's the way you want to play it, get your hands up. Now, see here, Preston, what's the meaning of this? I want to make sure you're not carrying a gun before I search that back room. Walking over to the lawyer, Sergeant Preston searched him. Oh, shoulder holster, eh? Well, I'll just relieve you of this gun for the time being. Now, let's see what's in that back room. As Preston opened the door, he saw a man lying bound and gagged on a cot. Shelburne! The sergeant rushed forward to the room. Suddenly, a voice spoke behind him. Drop that gun, Preston. Red Hobart had been standing behind the door. I said drop that gun. All right. Get your hands up in the air. Looks like we'll have two bodies to dump in the river instead of just one, huh, Red? It sure does. Maybe we ought to kill this money right now, huh? No, no, we better wait. The shot would make too much noise. And unfortunately, I left my knife in Joe Baird's back. Ten minutes later, Sergeant Preston had been gagged and tied securely to a chair. Guess they won't get away. Come on, we'll go get a couple of sleds and haul them down to the river. Right. Before leaving, the two crooks blew out the lamp, leaving the room plunged in darkness. The sergeant waited until he heard them go out the front door. Then, inch by inch, he began working his chair across the floor. Slowly but surely, the sergeant maneuvered himself toward the back door. Before the lamp was extinguished, he had noticed that the door was secured by a wooden bar. When he finally got close enough, he bent forward and pushed the bar up with his head. Then he waited tensely. Sure enough, King had heard his movements and approached to investigate. The great dog scented his master on the other side of the door. Instinctively, he pushed his way inward. As the door opened, the sergeant backed his chair away and King entered. The moonlight streaming in through the open doorway showed King his master's predicament. The great dog didn't need to be told what to do. He began gnawing at the ropes that held the sergeant's arms. It was slow work, but finally the last strand parted and the sergeant's arms were free. He ripped off his gag. Good work, King, old boy. Hastily, the sergeant began untying the ropes around his legs. The knot was still resisting his fingers when he heard dog teams approaching. A moment later, Mattoon and Hobart drove their sleds up to the rear of the building. Hey, look, the door's open. Holy smoke. Red got to the door first. As he rushed in with his gun drawn, King charged. Hey, look out, it's a dog. Red's gun fell to the floor as King's jaws closed on his arm. The great dog's savage attack drove Red backward, blocking the doorway and keeping Mattoon from entering. Come on, where you fool? How can I In the get resulting this dog? shuffle, Red's gun was kicked across the floor. At that moment, Preston broke clear. He died for Red's gun, groping for it in the moonlit gloom. 
Mattoon saw the movement and whipped out his own revolver. Oh, no, you don't, Preston. Before Mattoon could fire, King sprang at him, knocking him off balance. <laughs> the shot went wild, but now Red was free to act. He rushed forward and aimed a vicious kick at the Mountie's head. I'll fix you, Marty. But Preston grabbed his ankle and jerked him to the floor. Before Red could recover, Preston landed a terrific right to the jaw. Then the sergeant picked up the gun and covered the two crooks. All right, get your hands up, both of you. Don't you? Pull off this dog. All right, King, he's had enough, fella. Get to your feet, both of you. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. A short time later, when the crooks had been handcuffed and Shelburne had been untied... Sergeant Preston learned how the detective had been taken prisoner and how Bat Nelson had fled from the hideout earlier that evening. So it was Bat Nelson who hired you to frame me, eh, Matun? I'm not talking. You don't have to, my friend. You've already said and done enough to send yourself to the gallows. Shelburne here can testify that you admitted killing Baird. What'll happen to Hobart, Sergeant? He'll stand trial as an accessory and probably hang along with Matun. Don't think you're so smart, Preston. You still haven't caught Bat Nelson. No, I haven't. But I've routed him out of his hideout here in Dawson, and he won't stay free much longer. In the meantime, you and Mattoon have committed your last crime. Your case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Time's a-wasting, fellas and girls... Hurry to your grocer. Ask for, look for, special new Yukon Trail packages of swell-tasting, nourishing Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. There are eight different new packages. Models of Bell Manors Hotel and Mountie Headquarters in Dawson City are on package number seven. Also, Wells Fargo Office, Trading Post, and Interior, Basket-type Dog Sled, and Team of Husky. You'll want all eight packages so you can build the entire Yukon Trail. Every package is is clearly numbered on the front. For instance, on package number one, you get models of the White Horse Jail that Bat Nelson broke out of. On number eight, Yukon Queen River Boat with a paddle that turns. Number five, Klondike Mountain. Don't miss any of these exciting Yukon Trail models. There's no waiting, no extra cost. They're at your grocer's now. These 59 larger, easier-to-build models come only on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the original crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Get yours right away. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Trail's End. I had vowed to bring Bat Nelson to justice, yet time after time he'd slipped through my fingers. When I found out he'd sailed from Dawson on the Yukon Queen, I knew that this was my last chance to catch him before he reached the border. The pursuit led to the raging ice-choked waters of the mighty Yukon River, where I faced a fight to the finish. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.